to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to, to that video in the beginning, that, that two minutes of, hey, how to be saved, why it's important to be saved, because we're all sinners in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. The Son of God, the begotten Son, came down in flesh form, walked, and he sh showed us his grace and love by dying on a cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is your gospel, that Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead, and that resurrection is extremely important. In 1 Corinthians 15, you go on to read, you can see he was witnessed by 500 people when he did come back from the grave three days later. And he defeated death and hell for us because he loved us and he took on the wrath of God on that cross and bared all of our sins. The blood that he shed is what atones and what we're counting on and, and how you know you're eternally secure by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a heart belief, it's a relationship, it's not a religion. And it's not a works, lest any man can boast. Boast, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Let's take a look at uh, John chapter 1, and we're going to look at uh, what I, I just sort of like this chapter, but it's true light, and, and who is the light of the world? Of course, we know that's Jesus, that's God. But let's start with John 1, 9. And the Bible reads, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Verse 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So, you know, of course, Jesus is God. He created the earth, and, and again, he was rejected by his own people. Verse 11, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. So, you know, sons of God and power, you know, we become real sons of God when we accept that Jesus died for us on the cross. Amen. And the resurrection power of Romans 8, 11 and Romans um, 8, 17 through 23 are real. And let's, let's go over there. Let's go over to Romans. In Romans 8, 11, the Bible reads, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So when you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit resides within you. It's the gift at Acts 2 that Jesus talked about to his disciples and they received it and and he did ra raise himself from the dead and Jesus dwells in us through the Holy Spirit and he go goes to prepare a place for us. To go down further in verse 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may, may be also glorified together. You know, we're, we're one with him 
and we received this grace that we didn't deserve on the cross. And I find it interesting. That's verse 17. Let's go back to John chapter 1. So we'll go to uh, verse 13 where we left off um, of John chapter 1, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So Jesus Christ's Father was God. Uh, he, but he was you know, incarnate. He was made flesh and walked on the earth. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ, before he became flesh, he was the word of God. So we see here in verse 14, he dwelt with us, we beheld his glory, and he was the word of God. Verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake, he that cometh at after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So obviously he's talking about Jesus being God because he was before you know, even you know, Adam or Abraham, Father Abraham. And, and the, uh, the Jews, the priests and the Levites detested Jesus Christ and denied him as, as Lord and Savior. Verse 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace, that's a beautiful, grace is found throughout the Bible, Genesis 2 to Revelation 20, 22. But it wasn't righteous in the eyes of God until Jesus died on the cross. You know, when Jesus looked down, he saw his son, who he knew was righteous and truthful and wonderful. And then he saw the sins of man and he poured down his wrath on Jesus. And the only reason that he even, you know, sees us at all righteous is we're covered in that blood. Are you covered in the blood of Jesus Christ today? Today's the day to really get saved. And uh, he put away the law of man and put away the works doctrine that failed. Man failed, of course. You know, the, the law was perfect, but we couldn't keep it. And so Jesus made the path away. And it continues to read of verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You know, I think that's ironic that, and you know, it's just sort of, what God does, he likes sevens. And you see verse 17 talks about the grace and putting away the law. Verse 18, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. And so Jesus Christ about 2,000 years ago, about two days in God's time, as, as 1 Timothy 3, 8 shows that uh, the day is about 1,000 years and 1,000 years of day to God. And the church age is about done. You know, it's a dark period of time, and, and Jesus is the true light, and we can, through the Holy Spirit, shine that light out and do the work here in these in these times and, and serve Him. And, you know, the Lord is long-suffering for all to get saved, and so a lot of people are looking for the rapture, and, you know, we see end times revving up. We see the birth pangs. We see the wars, the rumors of war. We see the one-world system coming together, looking for their, and, and longing for their Antichrist leader, their, their so-called false messiah, the Jews' false messiah, as the Jews look forward to it as well. And all these things seem to be coming to a, to a boiling point, and, and it will come that way. But when? We don't know. So we just keep looking up. I mean, we're certainly in a season now, you know, with um, Passover, and then you have, um, you know, have everything to do with uh, those, fe those feast days that, that are in the spring that are very exciting. And, we, you know, we're, God could come back any day. Like the rapture is imminent. So you should keep your hope, your blessed hope, Titus 2.13, you shouldn't lose it. But, you know, I thought this might be a blessing for you. And Jesus is the true light. So just turn to him. Any, any of your worries, concerns, if you're feeling spiritually attacked or heavy, turn it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will provide. He will protect. And he does love. And he does care for your prayers. Pray daily. Read your Bible. Stay connected. God bless and have a great day.